Hello, I'm Mr. Pleasant Books. For this book talk, we'll be discussing the book 14 by Peter Kleins. Now, I didn't actually start out with this book and reading his series. I started out with another series of his called, uh, I think it's X Heroes. And in that series, you have superheroes who've gone through a zombie apocalypse, or are going through a zombie apocalypse, and just how, how they would handle it, how the world would be. Would they save more? Would they save less? Would the people have more hope? Would the people still descend into animals? You know, it was just, it was a neat series to go, to go into, and I liked it so much that I decided to get 14 by, by him, just because I wanted to see what else he had to write, and I am very glad I did, because 14 turned out to be way better than the, the blurb on the back gives it to you. <laughs> The, the blurb on the back makes it seem kind of like, eh, okay, not a little mystery book. But it turns out to be much, much better than that, that little section gives you. In this, we have Nate, who lives in L.A., finds a cheap, really cheap apartment for L.A., and decides to move in. And when he moves in, he finds out that the reason is so cheap is because a lot of people find it weird to live there, and they want to move out really fast, and... And he, and he wants to know why is it like that. And then he starts to look around and he notices that all the apartments are different shapes. And that the building is a much older style building than he was expecting. And that the people inside the building are not your typical cast of people. So he wants to find out why that is. And it's the book about, about just what he finds out as he digs deeper and deeper into the mystery of the building. Oh, and he also wants to find out why... Apartment number 14 has four big padlocks on the door because it's the only apart the only room in the entire building that has four big padlocks on it to keep people out. And so it's just it's just the story about that. I know I probably didn't make it sound as amazing as it is, but it is a really good book and I and I would say definitely read it because it just it starts out a little slow but it gets by the end you're just you're not going to want to put it down because you want to read what's going on. But I believe that's all I can say with the non-spoilery. So from here forward, there will be spoilers. Bye. Okay, so as, like I was saying before, I just, I really like this book. In it, the, the even the side characters are kind of fleshed out and interesting. They're not just there to fill up space. He actually makes that you want to read about them, makes you care about them more than than you normally get for just side characters in a book. Because, you know, you can't get to know everybody in the building. But you still kind of do. You get to know them almost like you're living there yourself and meeting them yourself. And and uh, I will say that I, li I like Nate a lot, but I also really liked Tim. Tim was... <laughs> he's an old man. <laughs> I, I like how he says he knows everything because it was, it was found in the book publishing place that he made... <laughs> And that, that even though he knows all of these amazing things, he still encourages others to, to use them. Like when, oh, I can't remember his name, the, the, the grip is picking the lock on the door. I mean, even though Tim knows how to do it really quick and really easily, he still encourages the guy to practice that skill, to learn it, and to use it so that he can hopefully become better at picking locks in the future. And I just that was really cool of Tim to do. And then we find out, yeah, that the Cavatch building was built by Nikola Tesla. And I'm like, oh, wow. And I, and I didn't really know Tesla much before this book. I started researching a bit more when I found this book. And I finally started realizing, oh, why, why it was significant. He had Tesla being the guy who, who helped design and create the building. And then the idea of the consciousness being what weighs down... Uh, there are, and it always explains why there's all those theories about how they want to depopulate the earth, want to bring it back down to under a billion, you know, these secret organizations, as maybe they actually do believe that, that there is, <laughs> and you don't hear about that part, maybe it's because even conspiracy theorists are like, ah, we shouldn't tell that part because it'd be a little too weird for the average person, but it would explain it, and then, I don't know, I, whereas the monsters are, are scary, I don't think they'd be that big of a deal nowadays. I like maybe back in the early 1900s before we had jet fighters and and stealth bombers and sidewinder missiles and the weaponry that we have now. Yeah, a, 
800 foot long flying psychic whale monster beast with tentacles that could rip rip you off the ground and eat you would be terrifying. I'm like, okay, it'd still be terrifying now. But so what? So what if they break through? We we'd kill them. I mean, we'd, we'd, we'd take those out like they're no big deal nowadays. I and mean, I don't know. I, I, I can understand why they were scared of them now. I just don't really get why they'd be scared of it happening today. Like why everyone's still trying to make sure you can't break through the barrier. Maybe there's worse monsters somewhere else. And this is just the the tip of the iceberg, as they say. And it's just th these ones are the ones who first come across. Then we're going to have something else. I, and I haven't read the entire Threshold series yet. I've only actually read the first two in the series, the 14 and Fold. But I don't know, maybe, maybe more comes up. Maybe more is to show you why it should definitely be scary that we can break through the dimensional barrier when, the, when there's enough consciousness in the world. Uh, and it also makes you kind of worry about hippies always wanting to bring consciousness in. Maybe they're part of the family trying to destroy the world. I don't know. I, I, I... Oh, and then when he finally does get into room 14, that I did not see coming. I did not expect it to be that portal to the moon. The, or, or, yeah, it was to the moon because yeah, he said he saw Earth in the background. And that, that caught me. I was not expecting <laughs> I thought it'd be just uh, like a portal to the other dimension, maybe, or a portal to, or not even a portal. I thought maybe it'd just be a room full of the computer, the you know, something that's keeping everything in line. But when it actually opened up to the vacuum of space, <laughs> that surprised. And it also, also makes me wonder about maybe that's why they haven't gone back to the moon since the 60s. Because, uh, you know, this isn't the only only place they have. I would imagine, and if they landed on the moon and they saw stuff from Earth that had been pulled through by somebody else screwing around, maybe they're like, we won't go back here. There's there's obviously something going on. We'll leave it be. And they never just went back to the moon because of that. And it's also another theory that's out there that admittedly is only a theory for the book. <laughs> but still, it's a neat theory to think about. And it's just, yeah, Peter Clients did a very good job of this book. I'm I'm glad I picked it up because I did just kind of pick it up on a whim. Even the, the X-Heroes books I just picked up on a whim because I was scrolling through it. And I'm like, ah, zombies, superheroes, I like both of those things. And, and I, I, yeah, and I hope you enjoyed it when you read it because I very much did. And I hope, hope you enjoy the rest of his works. And I hope you just enjoy reading some more. But anyways, I'm Mr. Pleasant Books. Thank you for being here. I'll talk to you later. Oh, 